but whatever. Okay, so I guess we're on time. Time to begin. Nice little turnout. Well, first off, thank you for coming here in spite of the charity auction. I know that a lot of people are probably over there, and I don't blame them, but also I'm glad that you all chose to hang here with me instead. So this is my little panel, Weasels, the Lucky Wild Wonders. This is the debut run. It is a bit cobbled together, but I hope, nevertheless, my passion for these things shows. So you're probably wondering, who are you, and why are you here? This is the section, a quick little introduction, in which the presenter, that is me, <laughs> establishes their lack of credentials. It doesn't get that essential just yet. So first off, who am I? Well, I'm Sneak the Stoat. You can see right there. Um, my main son, however, is Rain, or if you're feeling spicy, Lydia Shinotsu. And I've also been roaming around the con as my other, uh, her sake persona, Calypso the dog. And I also have like three other sonas, but I didn't have the space to put those in. And my credentials? Okay, so how did I become a weasel? This is, I guess, a little bit of a testimonial. So, for the longest time, I was not really a weasel person. Like, I knew about them, but you know, just like, there, I guess. I remember way, way, way back, I forget how long, but it was when I was just a little kitten. Uh, there was an episode on TV, one of the local channels, I think. There, it was a feature about parrots, I believe. This wasn't like BBC Nature, that's not a local channel, but... I don't remember the, any other details about that episode. It was just there. It, stays in my memory as a very fuzzy memory. And then Ubuntu 19.10 happened, with, and that one was codenamed Eowyn Ehrman. I had no idea what Eowyn or Ehrman meant. So I looked up Ehrman and I found that it was a type of weasel. I will be covering that. And this is actually right as I was getting back into Linux. Uh, I had just gone from Spare SSD and thought, hey, I should maybe throw a Linux on my old one. Because why not? And then the turning point. So I was at MFF 2022, and I was doing scroll on Twitter for a second. It was like right before the con started. I found a listing for a pre-made stoke fursuit. And, okay, at first it didn't mention the species. I, it didn't connect to me that that was a stoke. So I thought it was a mountain lion. <laughs> Mind you, at this point, I had like three sonas and they were all felid, so I was thinking, okay, this is probably a felid too. It wasn't. I, I still liked it though, and I just thought, okay, I'll put that in the back of my mind. But I guess the next day, I, uh, I don't know, something just bugged me. I, I wanted to learn more, okay? So I messaged the first seat maker, and I expressed my interest. I was like, okay, I want to know, like, the size and, like, has any personality, anything, and they just thought, like, no, it's a blank slate, and it, this will fit this size. So, I decided, okay, well, maybe I can figure out what weasels are normally like, and, um, well, I kind of fell in love. <laughs> And I also learned about the first year, realized it would fit me really well. For $17.50 for a uh, head, paws, and tail, it's actually not bad. And so I bought it. I got it shortly after the con, but, you know, still. And that was my first time ever in a fursuit. I had never worn a fursuit, never tried a fursuit. I just bought a $17.50 fursuit. No idea what I was getting into. Was it a bad idea? Yes. Was it worth it? Yes. If it weren't going to be here. Okay, so moving on. The purpose of this presentation. As I mentioned, I friggin' love weasels. And I think you can too. So 
So I'm going to share with you some of insight on weasels so that you can learn about them, much like I did. So this panel will be a lot of actually useful information, some fun facts and random musings as well. And we'll cover a little bit of the ugly, like, there will be mentions of like the fur trade and predation. I will not show any images regarding either of those. You know, there's a fisher belt that is being offered to be shown, and I might actually bring that out. But this is the purpose of this presentation. So now, unless you're already like deep into the uh, must live for a community, you're probably now wondering. Sorry, what am I looking at? This is going to be a particularly long section where I'm going to cover what exactly the definition of weasel is. Believe me, it is very complicated, and it is going to be a whole run of taxonomy and a lot of all that good stuff. So, to get right into it, let's start broad. This is the family Mustelidae. This is the by far broadest picture of what a weasel could be, because all weasels are mustelids. But not all mustelids are weasels, usually. It, it depends on how wide you cast your net. Because Mustelidae also includes otters and badgers. And those aren't typically included in the definition of weasels uh, for uh, furry parlance. But, so as you can see, this is the common ancestor into the early Miocene. And this branched off into Taxidia taxis, the American badger, and then all the other ones. The next branch was a Melivora, I think, is that Capensis, Covensis? A small tax, hard to read. And then that went into a lot of the other badgers. Actually, where are they? Here's one. And. Oh, yeah, right here. These are Melis. This is. I think Melis Melis is the European badger, but I could be wrong about that. And then there's Melogale up here, which is also in the... I guess it's arguably a badger, it's technically a ferret badger. I will be going over that a little bit. I admittedly, I won't have much material in terms of these. I will have literally none coming from, going forward. But I will still include a lot of these guys. I, I will be talking about Metal Gale for just a little slide. Then we also have our Gulinins here, your Martins, Fisher, Wolverine, your Tyra. And this is where we get to the uh, subfamily Ictonicae. This is your, uh, this is a lot of your polecats, like your Marble Polecat, European Polecat, some others as well. Then we get into the Mustelinae. This is a very tall projector, I cannot reach. But this is where your true weasels reside, I guess. Like your weasels, ferrets, doves, and some of the mink. Actually, all the mink. And then, actually, uh, so as it turns out, um, these guys, Mustelins, share a common ancestor with otters, subfamily Lutrinae, that other musclet subfamilies don't have. So in that regard, Otters are the most closely related to like the true weasels than even like most of your polecats and your martins and fisher. However, <laughs> well, this is basically just a run go through of like I'm not gonna make that mistake again of a lot of the different subfamilies and genera of, of weasel types. You have, of course, your subfamily Mustelinae with two genera, Mustela and Neogale. Then your subfamily Ichnechime, with Galactus, Ictonix, Lincadon, Poachilogale, and Vermella. You also have your subfamily Gulonine, Ida, Gula, Martis, and Picania. These are all typically included in Mustelid furry parlance as, like, weasels. I don't see any Lutrine honors included much. Which is a bit ironic, because again, they are the most closely related to, like, Mustelinae, which are almost always come to those weasels. So in that regard, the uh, definition of weasel, at least for most of the furry parlance, is paraphyletic. 
That means that all of them share a common ancestor, but not all descendants of that common ancestor are included in the definition. Okay, a bit ironic, but see, that's the problem of defining a weasel. Because either your definition is going to be really complicated, or it's going to take off a lot of the muscle of the furry community. So anyway, let's run through some of those genera and some of those species. Believe me, if I did all of them, we'd be here all day, and I don't want to do that. So here's the genus of the Stella. These are almost always the ones that count as weasels. The term comes from the Latin mus, mouse, and talon, meaning javelin. This is, as you can probably tell, the nominate genus of the family of Stella de Winnestan over here, actually. And that basically means that this is the genus after which the family is named. There are 18-ish species, I cannot find a concrete number, all of lists have like different amounts. And they include, but are not limited to, Mastella nivalis, the leek weasel, Mastella marinea, the stoat, there are others, I will be talking about that too. Mastella fura, the domestic ferret, Mastella pretorius, the European polecat, Mastella negritus, the black-footed ferret, Mastella glutriola, the European mink, Mastella eversmani, the step polecat, and Mastella cataya, the yellow belly weasel. This is inconvenient. <laughs> uh, first off, Mastella nivalis. This is the least weasel, and this is your textbook definition of weasel, especially in Great Britain, where this is the definition of weasel. And there are actually 13 of those species, I'm not going to list them, but I will list the three categories they fall into. Pygmia rictosa, Bacamella, and Nivalis. Now this is me, not hack. This is Mistella arminea. Mistella arminea is easily confused for the least weasel, but still is stinks. Their common name, the stoat, has an origin that's likely either Dutch, stout, meaning bold, or Gothic, stouten, which means to push. This creature is also called the ermine, after the winter coat, again, a or an ermine, or the short-tailed weasel if you're in North America. Also just weasel if you're in Ireland, since least weasels are not found there. But you know how I say, like, you know, Mastella, Ernea, and Elia? Let's talk about that. So, for the longest time, it was thought that all stones fell under the, sub the species Mastella Ernea. But a 2021 study by Jocelyn Kalala at Elia named Extrinsically Reinforced Hybrid Speciation with Antarctic Ermine and Mastella Species produces an insular endemic. And this, uh, this paper, this study, established two other species. There's Mastella herzoni, the American ermine, which is the one you can see at left, and Mastella hydarum, the Haida ermine, also known in the higher language as dayats and tlag, depending on their collage, their seasonal collage. And while it is thought that Mastella herzoni is completely distinct, from Mastella urbanea, it is thought that Mastella hydatum is actually a hybrid species. Like, Mastella urbanea and Mastella micarsonae had bred and produced another species. So, this is all cool and all. You know, there are three different, there are three different species that my summer could be. But see, I'm a sucker for details. So this leaves me with a problem. What the heck am I? Am I Mastella Ermenea? I tried asking the first year maker if they didn't give me a definitive answer. They're just like, oh, whatever, if you like. So I took it upon myself. Stout is usually for Mastella Ermenea, because, again, here they're typically called short-tailed weasels, and this is the primary range of Mastella Ermenea including where I have lived all my life, northern Wisconsin, and a little spell of in northern Michigan as well. I can at least tell you definitely not Mr. Light item, but I'm still torn on which of those to say I am. But honestly, I don't know, man. 
I'm just a stoat. But you know what I'm not? I'm not the least weasel. So here's the differences to help you identify which was which. So the least weasel is about 4 to 5 to 10.2 inches long, depending on the sex and the uh, just the general size, whereas the stoat can be as small as 6.7 inches or as large as 10.6 inches long. The tail of the least weasel, which is not shown in this picture, unfortunately. There was a really good picture that included it, but I could not find a good license for it. I had no idea what it was actually licensed under, or who the original creator was, and I didn't want to risk anything. Uh, the tail is about one-fifth of the body length, and does not have a distinctive black tip. Whereas when you start it, it's about two-fifths of the body length, and does. As you can see, if I can get... Does, is my curse? Is it? Where is it? Oh, okay, I see it. See? Nailed it. Also, the border between the fur, or the brown and white fur, is a bit jagged on the least weasel, as you can see here. I'm very, doing a very bad job of moving my cursor. Whereas on the stuff, it is more or less smooth. I'm going to move that a little bit, actually. Make it not your problem. Or, as well, the least weasel's ears are not super pronounced, but the stems are. And uh, as you can maybe see by this picture, unless you're going in the back, uh, the least weasel tends to have little brown spots on its cheeks, whereas the stoat does not. I actually wanted to just show this now over here, because, see this? This is a stoat. It has the big ears and no funny brown spots. And also, the tail has a dark tint. So, okay, let's two species down, and we are making okay time. Here's the domestic ferret. This also comes as a weasel. In fact, it is the only weasel that is actually domesticated. Is supposedly domesticated from the European polecat, Mesola Pretorius. And in fact, at one point, at least according to a book I have, or at least I've borrowed from the library, there, this was once classified as Mesola Pretorius fura, whereas now it's just Mesola fura, it became its own species. The name, the common name, the ferret, comes from the Latin term uh, furitus, which means little thief. And, somewhat deceptively, we have Mastella nigridipus, the black-footed ferret. This is also known as the American polecat, and they are actually more related to other polecats than to domestic ferrets. So, these guys were kind of back from the brink, because they were declared extinct in 1979, but they were found again in 1981, and they have had a very, very slow and rocky recovery since, and right now they are listed as endangered on the IUCN Red List. They occur over a little bit off to the west, like the western US. But thankfully, they might be getting a bit of a boost in their recovery, since now they're being cloned, but the first successful clone being done in 2021 named Elizabeth Ann. If you have an image of Elizabeth Ann, I just know that she exists. There are actually now, as of this year, 2024, two new domestic or black footed ferret clones. See, I just looked up. So I'd love to talk about even more species of muscle, but we need to move on. Oh, I got a question. Did you hear about the news? No. Um so a pair of cloned fer uh, black hood ferrets were actually able to reproduce. Oh, okay, I have heard of that, actually. That's why I mentioned, like, the two that were cloned earlier this year. Yeah. They are able, they, Elizabeth Ann is not able to reproduce, or at least is not intended to reproduce, but the two that were just cloned this year are, and I assume they will be reproducing together, which is actually pretty great, in my humble opinion because this should accelerate their recovery. Any other questions for now, or...? Okay, let's talk about the other genus under subfamily Mastellinae, Neogale, the New World Weasels. 
These are often also desert weasels. They were all actually formerly classified under genus Nacella, but both the American mink and the sea mink were classified or were reclassified under Neovisan in 1999 before all five of these species were reclassed under Neogale in 2021. Did I say five species, by the way? Those are Neogale africana, the Amazon weasel, Neogale felipe, the Colombian weasel, Neogale fernata, the long-tailed weasel, Neogale vasan, and the, the American mink, and the extinct Neogale macrodon, the sea mink. I am really miffed that last, 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 last one's extinct. I will be talking about that. I will be going down an every raid. It will happen. This is a threat. But for now, let's discover two of the species that are still extinct. This is Neogale fernata, the long-tailed weasel. It looks very similar to a stoat, again, compared to the, see also stoats versus least weasels. In fact, they are also known as the big stoat, or the masked ermine, as well as the brought weasel. However, they are slightly larger. I don't have like specific numbers on this. It's either 12 to 14 inches, or maybe as much as 22. They have an even longer tail than stoats, about three-fifths of the body length, and they also have a black tip, and they sometimes have yellow fur in place of the white underbelly. It could be just as little as like the chin, could be like the entire like chestish area, could be the entire underbelly. And, and here is yet another species. This is Neogale for some, the American mink. This is one of two extant mink species, and it is one of two extant Neogale mink species. Actually, hold on. There are only, there's, this is the only one actually extant Neogale mink species. I made a slight mistake. There are two Neogale mink species, but this is the only extant one. And this is actually going to be the, uh, talking about the scientific name, Neogale Vasan. It shares an etymology with both weasel and, I believe, bison in the Proto Germanic term Vasant in the sense of stinking animal, or Latin visio, meaning stench. They are very stinky. There are, like, mink farms up near me, and, yeah, it, it always is a pain to drive by them because they smell awful. I would cover the other two, but I don't have much info on them, so I'm going to talk about subfamily Lutronae, because they are more closely related to the true weasels. But they, again, they are the roadblock to a monophyletic definition of weasel, as they are rarely counted among the weasels. Even though they do share a common ancestor with Mastellinae, and other subfamilies don't. And you can kind of see how they're related, in that these guys are semi-aquatic, and both the mink species are also. You know, Neogale Vasan and Neogale, uh, you know, Neogale Macrodon. I believe the European mink, which was Marcella lutriola, is also semi-aquatic, but I do not remember off the top of my head. It would not surprise me, given that it is in Marcella lutriola, and this is a family Lutronae. So I don't actually have a lot of, like, I'm not going to run through all the species of this one, unfortunately. I just want to, like, give an extra shout-out to this particular species, the spotted neck otter, Hydrochus macrocolis. Because one of my other fursomas is a spotted necked otter. I could have included like. There it is. Thank you for the pointer. I think this one has a bit of uh, issues with like cutting out occasionally, but that should be fine. Um, okay, I forgot what it was, so we're just going to move on. Let's talk about the subfamily Ixonechine. I'm not going to cover too many of these, I just want to... <clears throat> okay. 
I just want to include a little bit about this, because they were formerly included in the paraphyletic relationship with the stelinae, again, like I mentioned. They are still counted as part of like muscular parlance. And much like stoats and skunks, they have a bit of a chemical spray for defense. No wonder they're so stinky. And these guys are split into seven extant species across five genera across two tribes. In tribe Echnachne, we have Pictonix, the striped polecats, or Chilagale, the African striped weasel, and Warmella, the marble polecat. In tribe Blinkodontini, we have Blinkodon, the Patagonian weasel, and the Lictus, which are the grizzlies. So under tribe Echnachne, we have Pictonix trialis, the striped polecat, Pictonix plebicus, the Sahara and striped polecat, Oachilagel albanicha, the African striped weasel, which you can see up on the screen, or Malapadagusna, the marble polecat, and two fossil species from Malapadagusna, a likely ancestor to the marble polecat, and possibly, we haven't confirmed whether this is another species, from Malaprisca, which was found in China. I don't know too much more about that, I, that is all I know. But whether or not that is its own species has yet to be determined, it is just the running theory for now. I want to, I don't want to talk too much about all of these different species, I just want to cover one that's somewhat, somewhat important to me, for Malapadagusna, the marble polecat, as one of my friends is a marble polecat. Formella comes from the German word Vrindwein, meaning little worm, and Pedagusna comes from the Ukrainian word, I'm sorry I'm going to butcher this, Paradushna, the polecat. Uh, the name is kind of deceiving, though, because these are not actually cats. In fact, all the weasel species are more closely related to dogs. Because I think it's like, I forget exactly what uh, tier in The, the exact term for this includes me, but it was like, you know, Kingdom Animalia, Phanum Cordata, all that. I believe it's Order Carnivora, but like, I've, I think it's like Class Caniformia. I don't remember if that's the right tier, but they're under Caniformia, which are the dog types, rather than Feliformia, the cat types. But also, like, these are also really cool because look at that fur pattern. Is that not amazing? It is very good. Unfortunately, they have very bad eyesight. However, they have an amazing, impeccable even sense of smell. This, I suppose, helps them a lot during hunting, because then they can find their prey. I wish I had more on this, but let's keep moving on. Here's the tribe Lincodontini, which includes Lincodon patagonifus, the patagonian weasel, Galactus cuja, the lesser grizzly, and the Lictus Vitata, the greater grizzly, which you can see there. There are also three other fossil species, Galactus Enigi, -E -E I don't know how to pronounce that, Galactus Senegiosensis, and Galactus Sargentini. So, uh, not, well, I don't have too much to on that, but let's talk about subfamily Glononae now, because they were also formally included in a paraphyletic relationship with Mastellinae, and sometimes still are. And as it happens, most Gulenins are arboreal, that, mean, that meaning they live up in the trees. These are split into 11 extant species across four genera, across two tribes. There's tribe Gulenini with the Ida, meaning, or, which is the Tyra, Gulo, the Wolverine, as well as Tribe Martini, Martas, the Martins, there were lots of them, and Picano, the Fisher. So I don't have a lot to cover on these guys either. I just want to talk about the Martins a little bit. So I don't have too much to add besides you know, the eleven of the trees, at least for now. I will be talking I will be talking a bit more about these later. But here are some uh, species. You have or Martus Martus, the Pine Martin. This one's really funny to me in my humble opinion because Martus is also the Spanish word for Tuesday. 
So if you want to celebrate your pen pregnant on a Tuesday, you can say it is Martis, Martis, Martis. But then you also have Martis Americana, the American Martin, Mastella Cardina, the Pacific Martin, Mastella Favagula, the Yellow-throated Martin, Mastella Foina, the Beach Martin, Mastella Guadquinsi, the Nelgibi Martin, Mastella Merampus, the Japanese Martin, and Mastella Zibelina, the Sable. Sables are actually really cool, as they have a really nice, like, dark fur color. I don't have a picture of them included here. Actually, I might later. I think I do. Yeah. But, obviously, this is a little bit of a run through of the different Martins. I encourage you to look them up, because they're actually really cool creatures. They don't have too much content on them, unfortunately. But, so. And actually, I want to talk about one more subfamily. Electidinae, the ferret badgers. I know I lumped these in with badgers before, but I think they're kind of neat. There's only one genus, Melogale, which includes these species, Mastella, Mastella Everetti, the Bornean ferret badger, Mastella Machana, the Chinese ferret badger, Mastella Subarantiaca, the Formorsen ferret badger, that's really hard to say. Mastella orientalis, the Javan ferret badger, Mastella personata, the Burmese ferret badger, and Mastella cuxorgensis, the Vietnam ferret badger. Vietnam ferret badger. These are actually more related to gulanids than to other badgers, which is why I'm including them. Because the other badgers are clearly very different species, but this one is not terribly far off. They still have their own subfamily. I'm gonna grab another mic, sorry. Is this one on? It is. Thank you. Let's go. Okay, so that actually went a lot. Actually, no, we're already halfway through. Okay. Um, we're still making okay time. So, that was a bit of a slog. But let's ask another question now. Where in the world is Carmen Sto Diego? <laughs> this is a little, really short section, actually. I didn't include too many spaces. Is this one too? Are you real? For real? Please? Okay. This is a short section, again, with not many species. I'm going to be covering the distributions of some of the different species, and not literally doxing myself. So, I'm giving my location. I'm only going to include, like, eight species, and I'm actually going to, like, talk about four. And they all share a common thread, and that you can find them in this very state of Wisconsin. But first off, let's talk about the entire family of the day. You can find these guys all around the world, primarily in the global north, a bit less commonly, but still frequent in the common south. They are barely available, though, in Greenland, the Sahara, and Arabia, and they are virtually non-existent in Oceania and Antarctica. There's an asterisk in Oceania because there, they were actually introduced. And um, I will be talking about that a bit later. I will have a slide on that. So, a bit more specifically now, here's the genus Mastella's range. As you can see, these guys are primarily circumboreal, which means you can find them around the northern hemisphere. But it turns out they also extend a bit into the global south, around South America. Primarily, let's see, can't see down here, it's very small, but it's like... Brazil, Ecuador, uh, when I need it most, my knowledge of South American geometry or geography fails me. But anyway, they are in South America and Southeast Asia, but not really Western Southern Asia or Southern South America. They were also introduced to Oceania, where they are now invasive. But you won't find them at all in either Africa or Antarctica. So let's actually cover some of these species now, like I said I would. 
Here's Masala Nivalis, the least weasel. These guys are circumboreal as well. Primarily, the, of the three different categories, the, the Pygmy Arixosa can be found in Northern Europe, Eastern Asia, and North America. Bacamela can be found in Transcaucasia to Middle Asia. That's like the, the Transcaucasia is really hard to point out here. Let me see if I can. It's a very small region of the world, about here, between, I think that these are the Caspian Black Seas, I could be wrong about that. That little, that little section there, the southern part of that is Transcaucasia. And there's also the category Nivalis, which is in European Russia, and it's here about, and Caucasia, which is this little part of the Caucasian region which is the northern part. And of the two subspecies you can find nearby, you have Mastella nivalis allegheniensis, the uh, allegheny beast weasel, if I recall correctly, and Mastella nivalis rexosa, the uh, bangs least weasel, if I remember, over in our neighbor to the west, Minnesota. How about uh, Isola Herminea and others? These are also circumboreal, and you'll primarily find them around forest regions. They are spread throughout Canada, Greenland, and the northern U.S., as well as, as, well as Europe and Asia. They were also introduced into New Zealand. Are they invasive? And of these subspecies, there's Nasala. I saw that we have Sonai Bansi, which is the western Great Lakes state nearby. And actually, on this map, it's really hard to see, as I'm sure if you're in the back. But, you know, there's this whole sea of green. This is where they're native. And see, that is where they're introduced and invasive. Another species you can find around here is Neogelfonata, the long tailed weasel. These guys are pretty much limited entirely to the Americas, all around like North and Central America, and very little of like Southern Canada. But they go all the way down to even to South America through Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, and into Bolivia. And of all these subspecies, the one you can find in this very state is Neogel Trinata novaboracensis, the New York long tailed weasel. And one more I actually want to like show the map of. Here's New Galveston, the American mink. These are native to the US and Canada, except for the southernmost US, the northernmost Canada. And they were introduced to southern Argentina and dotted throughout Eurasia. And of, the, of all the different subspecies, the one you can find nearby is New Galveston Montefera, the upper Mississippi American mink. This is a really bad color choice, I think, for the map, but where it's red, you can see where they're native, and where it's pink, you can see where they're introduced. So here are the other species you can find here. I'm not listing them, but like, going too much into detail on these, but there's Lontra canadensis, the North American river otter, Martis americana, the American marten, Picania pinati, the fisher, and Gula Gula, the wolverine. That's fun to say. Now, mind you, all this data comes from a book called Mammals of Wisconsin by Hartley H. T. Jackson. This book is from 1962. It might not be accurate anymore, because a lot of the information has changed, especially the taxonomy, as you know, that whole section had some very major changes in the past 30 years. The only thing I really updated for the sake of this presentation, though, is the names of the species including their scientific name and their common names, as both of them had, had changes. But now, okay, so that's all the ones around here. Let's talk the other side of the world, Oceania. So there are four different species introduced here. The least weasels, the stoats, the ferrets, and the European polecats. They were all introduced in the late 19th century for the purpose of hunting vermin, like mice and shrews and birds and other small animals. But they were a little bit too good at it. They are now 
all throughout uh, all throughout New Zealand now, and they are considered extremely invasive. So, you see, this is the only animal I can think of off the top of my head that was introduced somewhere for the sake of vermin hunting and is now extremely invasive. But unlike that one, these guys are not pets. So these so these little guys have to be trapped, and not the kind where you release them. You can, I believe, have pet ferrets in New Zealand, but they are highly regulated, if so. So, basically just don't, honestly. <laughs> okay, so that all aside, that was all kind of a slog. Let's get into the more fun stuff. What else have they like? This is a section in which I'm going to bring a slice of life and maybe scare the small animal furs in my audience. So let's talk about their diet. A lot of these guys, Macellinae, Lutronae, and Isolinae in particular, are obligate carnivores. That means they eat meat, and they eat only meat. However, Gulonanae and badgers, the all other species, the other uh, subfamilies rather, are omnivorous. They can also eat plant matter. And these guys are particularly scary because some of Macellinae can hunt prey up to ten times their size. So you can have prey as small as rice, mice, rats, and shrews. You can give it larger to squirrels. And sometimes even rabbits. And if, if your weasel is particularly enterprising, they might go for your chickens too. The, uh, the omnivorous species, however, are I also I really like berries and other fruit items. You are a little bit under the curve because that is the next slide. <laughs> I don't have a lot to talk about with these. These are just some funny egg memes I found. Egg. You know, the yolks are high in nutrients. Punch a little hole in them and like suck out the yolk and the stuff. They, and they, they punch with their like the claws. Like I, I think it's like probably with their teeth, honestly. Like I, I'm not really sure how exactly they eat eggs. I just know they like to eat eggs. But obviously, if you're a domestic parrot, you might like crack the egg and put it in the bowl yourself and just let them eat the yolk from there. They're also very messy eaters, as you can see by the bottom right image, lost in the sauce. <laughs> that one's face is covered in yolk. And uh, parrots like to also track the uh, yolk outside of the bowl, so you want to lay out a lot of newspaper. <laughs> so I mentioned that they're a lot of these guys are, you know, they're really good hunters. Here are some of the things that help them. First off, they are slender and long, which makes them very, very agile. And they also have claws that are non, or in the other species, semi-retractable. I don't have run species for all these guys, but these weasels, among the smallest of them, can run as fast as 6 miles per hour, which may not be a lot, like I think humans can run more like 10, it's probably like 10, 15. Uh, but you know, for their size, that is really dang impressive. And you know, those are just the smallest guys. Stoats are a bit larger and can run up to 8 miles per hour. Stoats are also among the smaller of the species. So if stoats can run 8 miles per hour, imagine how, how fast the other species can run. I didn't get numbers for these, but I can imagine it gets into the double digits. These guys are also primarily nocturnal. That means they're you know, active at night. But they're also frequently active in the day. And uh, one feature I really like about these, and I really like was actually included in my fursuit, is called the Henry's Pocket. This is something you will find in like hats, uh, some like pointy ear dots, and like, I forget what else, like weasel species, I think some bats have this too. But it's like a little pouch in like the uh, near the lobe of their ears. This allows them to uh, 
attenuate lower pitch sounds to amplify the higher pitch sounds. This helps for if like a creature is skittering in the night, you know, they can actually hear from quite a distance away. And also one thing I wish was included in the fursuit but isn't are the whiskers to feel their environment. Actually, speaking of limitations of my fursuit, I will also mention a fun fact. All weasels have five toes on each of their paws, front and hind. Unfortunately, Sneak only has four. However, at least in a reference, I did put in a fifth one because that is extremely important to me. Unfortunately, the fursuit maker doesn't do five toed hand claws, but whatever. It makes sense for the fursuit. Oh, and there's also one more thing I'd like to talk about with, with their hunting aids. The Weasel War Dance. The Weasel War Dance is an erratic display of dashes, jumps, and flips. I do not have a video of this, but you should really look it, look it up after this con. And this has a very interesting purpose. In the wild, this is supposedly used to memorize, to mesmerize their prey. So, you know, imagine you're a little, little mouse or something, and, you know, you're just minding your business. Out of nowhere, there jumps a weasel. They start jumping, dashing, flipping around. You have no idea what's happening, but you're watching them intently. Because you don't know what's going on. They are approaching closer and closer and closer. You don't realize it. But by the time you do, they are really close and it is time for them to deal the killing blow. This is, I don't really like how like, they do this, but it's like the back of the neck. Typically, that is where they go for it. They will bite down and bite down hard. Especially in these smaller animals, that does kill. In and the house, for domestic ferrets though, this isn't really used like hunt, so much as to celebrate once they catch their toy. And they also like to do it also after they catch their prey, much like teabagging if you're a toxic player in a Call of Duty match. <laughs> also in ferrets, you might find these accompanied by a clucking noise known in the uh, ferret pet owning community, known as Duke. Again, I don't really have examples of this. Please do look it up. I, I only have like visuals and I don't know anything. One other thing I think is really neat about weasels is, see, when winter comes, uh, these guys like to turn white. Primarily these stoats, some least weasels, and the long-tailed weasels. This is like mostly brown fur, minus the black tail tip. And this pattern is called ermine. Do you see why the stoat is called an ermine? At least here in Wisconsin, this molt happens around November. I think it was late this December sometimes. They turn back around March or April. This does vary by the latitude in which you find them. Like in southern latitudes, they won't change as much, if at all. Whereas in northern, they almost always do. Like I mentioned here, you know, the farther south they are, be less white. And, uh, I mean, here's a little bit about mating and, you know, young weasels. They typically do it around mid-year, like, as early as May for some species, as late as July or August for others. And they have what's called delayed implantation, where the embryos stay undeveloped, primarily throughout the winter. Usually around like March or April, the kits are born. They're about four to nine per litter, depending on the species. They mature fairly rapidly. They only actually separate from their, their mother after a few months. And these weasels are so small that the kits are called fingerlings because they're about the size of a finger. So you probably already might be interested in weasels. So you're wondering, can I keep one? So let's talk about the relationship between human and weasel, and also talk about the fur trade. So first off, an important disclaimer, weasels are not pets. There is one exception to this. There is one exception to this. The domestic ferret. It's in the name. 
These guys are very sociable, unlike most other reasons. In fact, they are so sociable, they require your attention for four to six hours per day. If you get a, a ferret, get two, that way you'll need to dedicate like 30 minutes. But still, if you get one, you will be spending a lot of time with it. And even then, they are still fairly wild. They need a lot of stimulation, including toys, hiding spots, and places to explore. And you also need to ferret-proof your home. This is a lot like baby-proofing. Don't keep things out and, and like on display unless you want them stashed into a little corner of the house you never knew existed. <laughs> oh yeah, also I want to talk about another species of semi-domesticated weasels, the American mink. Because these guys can be kept as a pet if they're adopted young. Their use is rather as much like ferrets are. However, you're a domesticated mink, but lose against a wild one. And they're also not really, like, you know, learning new tricks. They're kind of like a cat in that regard, I guess. And also, because they are mink, they are semi-aquatic, they like to be in kettles and other water-containing vessels. There's one other use for the American mink. This is where my angry tirade comes in. Let's talk about the fur trade. Because you see, mustelid fur is really popular. Those and otters have traditionally been used for fur, and even these days, mink and martens are kept for their fur. And all sorts of other mustelids too, you can find for their pets. These are often captured and murdered via trapping and farming. So this is why it ticks me off so much. This is where the sea mink comes back into the equation. Because these guys were once fairly prolific in New England and the maritime provinces of Canada. There's like Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, and the other one which I forget off the top of my head. But they were more widely hunted and trapped by settlers and indigenous people alike. It got so bad and it was so unregulated that after 1860 they were very seldom sighted. The last recorded kill was in 1880. And there were a couple more, like recorded in 1884, but they could have just been a large American mink. By the year 1920, though, they were gone. Gone. Never to come back. At least for, probably not for a long time, if even that. And this is why it takes me off so much. Even if you say, you know, your species is not endangered, you never know when they might be. But fortunately, it's not all bad. Because here's another case in point, the European mink. These guys, they are critically endangered. How, because they were once spread throughout Europe, but they were gradually extirpated, that is locally made extinct, in numerous countries. These days they only really exist natively in northern Spain and western France, but they're being reestablished in Estonia and by the Black Sea. So, I think that's a good thing at least. And I will say, the way they went, ex they went endangered is not entirely in the fur trade. It's a little part of it, but they're also... The American mink, as a, you may have seen in a previous slide, were actually introduced there and started competing because American mink are slightly larger and, you know, can get resources better. And habitat loss is also likely to decline. But again, I'm sure that now, you know, with these guys being critically endangered, you're going to be seeing a lot more efforts to conserve them, like we did with the Plains Bison, actually, in the 19th century after they were hunted to their extinction. Okay, so we're almost at the end of the panel, so I'm gonna wrap up. What was I supposed to learn here again? You're probably wondering. So, th these are some of the uh, key notes. I want you to like, I want you to keep these in mind. First off, the definition of weasel is complicated. You have, at your most specific, Mastella nivalis, the least weasel. The genus Mastella, which is, you know, all the, like, true, true weasels. Then you have your subfamily Mastellinae, which, uh, which adds in uh, the genus Neogale. You can possibly add Ictinicinae and Gulonidae. Again, this is common in the Mastellid furry community. You can maybe add Lutrinae, if you want to make the definition monophyletic. But whatever you choose here, it ultimately depends on how wide you like to cast your net. Another thing, 
They are everywhere. They are all around the world, except for Sahara, Oceania, Antarctica. And the genus Mustela, in particular, is notably in the global north and northern South America. Here in Wisconsin, you can find the least weasel, stoat, long-tailed weasel, and American mink, as well as the four other species. The wolverine, I think, fish I mentioned, the American martin, and the North American river otter. Also, these guys are ferocious. Again, they are mostly obvious carnivores, with older glyphosic branches being omnivores. They have sharp teeth to semi to non retractable claws. They are very capable hunters, with several advantages, including agility, circadian activity, Henry's pockets, and whiskers. And again, they are very strong, able to hunt prey larger than themselves, and they do a little war dance, mesmerize pairs on the brain to catch. Also, this plush toy will nibble your hand to the elbow. This is a threat. And one last thing. The relationship with humans is complicated, because mustelids are unfortunately priced for their fur, which even kill off the sea mink. The American mink farming is still popular in North America. Like I mentioned earlier, there are some mink farms in my very town. Most weasels are solitary and won't even approach humans. I'm not gonna lie, if I knew that I was being farmed for my fur, I wouldn't either, not gonna lie. But the ferrets are the rare exception because they are very social and can be kept as pets. The rare can make two if they're taken while young, but ferrets are also still quite wild and require a lot of attention and stimulation. If I were to put this in one sentence, weasels are autistic little critters just doing their best. And honestly, same. Thank you. That is the end of the entire presentation. Letters from the creators of the reference material I use, papers, maps, and Wikipedia articles, which I have gone through night after night after night. Kale Lalash for their Steps by Kale Lalash Telegram sticker pack. I bolts for their Weasel Trash Telegram sticker packs. And whoever the heck made the Frosty Longboy Telegram sticker pack, I don't know who that is, but thank you anyway. Hartley H.G. Jackson for his book Battles of Wisconsin. Robert E. Fuller is a great resource because. He does a lot of work with like stoats and uh, these weasels and other wildlife. He has a YouTube channel with a lot of subscribers where he talks about these for a long time. He has a lot of videos on them, and a lot of like weasel rescues too. He even has like a garden in his yard where he, where it's actually a safe haven for stoats and weasels. It's really cool. I wish I could include more of this, but I didn't quite have the time. Uh, also, Gunagi has a Fisher pelt, which uh, they haven't brought out yet. I thought they were going to play out here, uh, but... I, you, uh, I thought you wanted, like, one people before. Oh, I mean, yeah, you can do that too. Okay. Uh, if you want, so if you want to, like, see a Fisher pelt, you want to see a Fisher in person, talk to Gunagi there. And also, like, see this little cute, this is so cute, this a little cult, this sculpture of me. This was done by our friend Ghostly Pups. And they also have a little watch on. Uh, see? Uh, I'm wearing it on my neck right now. So, again, I want to thank all these people for their contributions to this panel, in, either directly or indirectly. And also, I want to thank you all for taking time to come here instead of the charity auction. Since I know that is going on and there is a lot of cool stuff there. Um, if you want to hang out here a while, I'm going to be taking things down. But I'd love to talk, keep talking weasels. But, Otherwise, if you just want to go, go and do other things, go to the charity auction seriously, and I'm sure they have a lot of cool stuff there. And it would be so worth your while to like see what they have left. And also, but before you do, uh, come, come over here and uh, grab some stickers. I, I have got stickers for everyone. Plenty of them.